Bulls. Oh, these are formidable. Heavy duty. Let's put these to the test. Um, so we're going to open it up. Uh, I'm going to start up here with a couple of questions that have been um, vetted by the administration. Um, so we know they're safe. They don't, they don't get too close to the core right off, right off the bat. This one's from Michael M. Is Michael M. here? Well, screw it. We're not doing it. He's right there. I see him. Okay. Michael M. wanted to know, what's your favorite burrito in Chicago? Hmm. I'm not going to wade into this. Okay. It's too controversial. Yeah, it is. Who okayed that question? Oh, that was one of the only ones that Sue didn't mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I have one. Here's, here's one from TJ in Chicago. Uh, you recently put out a new album. The uh, Ode to Joy came out in October, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, yeah, go ahead. After I got over the fact that it wasn't all Beethoven covers, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, right. I wanted to know when, when you have a new album, do you enjoy playing those songs live more because they're like more fresh, you haven't played them hundreds and hundreds of times, or do you more so enjoy the stuff that you know is gonna like land and kill each time? Um, we enjoy playing both. I think that uh, we're excited to play these songs live. Uh, because, um, I don't know, for, for us, they, they feel like they've been landing. They definitely feel, feel connect, we feel connected to them on right. a night-to-night -night basis. And I mean, it's hard for a new song to compete with songs that people have lived with for 20, 30 years, I don't know. Uh, but, um, but, I, but, uh, but it is where we are. It's like, it, that's, the, that's the music I think we're most excited to play. Gotcha. Even if it, even if it is a little uh, confrontational sometimes, you know, yeah. with an audience to play your new songs, so. Um, before I open it up, I'm gonna embarrass Jeff really quickly here. Um, he's got four nipples and they're all disgusting. No, um, <laughs> Jeff and I know each other through a- uh, Told a you, shared... <laughs> not to mention. <laughs> you said not to? Oh, yeah. okay. Um, through a shared affiliation with a charity called Letters to Santa, and over the past uh, 15 years or so, Jeff, through auctioning off concerts and items and stuff, has single-handedly raised over a million dollars for that, for that group. Uh, thank you. It's really pretty amazing. Thank you. I believe it covers up for the rest of the freaky shit you do the rest of the year. <laughs> um, but, uh, so, does anyone have a question you can directly ask? Yes, uh, go ahead, first hand I saw. The question was, in case you didn't hear it, what's it like to make people happy for a living? It's a question, I think that's a question for you, TJ. Yeah, I'll feel this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's hard work. Uh, I don't want to get too Jerry Lewis about it, you know, <laughs> tears of a clown, but, uh, no, go ahead. It, uh, I, I mean, that's, a, that's the kind of question that's, I don't know, fraught with peril for me. I mean, it's a very sweet question. And I appreciate it, and I and I and I do see that that is part of the role of a rock and roll band in society. <laughs> I think, but um, uh, that's a hard thing to cop to. Like, I was like, is that, that's not even a humble brag. That's like, <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, well, yeah, let me let me tell you. Wow. Making people happy for a living, ah, Why it's more of a calling, like really. That... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, when, you, when you tell your friends, just say he said he really likes it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Yeah. go ahead, right here. Did everyone hear that? You said, Desert Island, which of your guitars do you take with you and why? It's nice that you're thinking of doing shows on the Desert Island. I, if I was, oh, uh, I have this, this bass made by a company called, I think it was Earthwound, or like an Ernie Ball giant like acoustic bass. And I think I would take that because I think I could make a boat out of it. <laughs> it's a practical answer, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's really the only right But answer. if I, it was no chance of getting, uh, uh, you know, it's just stuck there for the rest of my life, my Martin 018 from the 30s. So that's the main guitar I use. You use a ton of guitars. Everybody does. It's a real, it's a real fire drill at the end of every song. Yeah, we've 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 crunched the numbers, and we feel like if we didn't do that, we would spend a, at least 
I don't know, 20 minutes out of every set tuning. <laughs> and, re, and, you know, re, retuning and, you know, so that's, that's the reason. I know it looks extremely, you know, uh, I don't know what's the word for it, e egregious. <laughs> sure, someone look up egregious and see if we just used it right. <laughs> Uh, there's a question right there, go ahead. Favorite show, favorite venue, in case you didn't hear. Um, I, don't rem I don't remember enough of the shows to um, make a, a committed answer. I mean, uh, there, there are tons of under unbelievable places to play. I mean, over the years, I think that the easy answer, the first one that comes to my mind is, I wish we could still play lounge acts. I wish we could still be at lounge acts occasionally. And that's not just because I'm married to the woman that used to own it. But, um, you know, that was a magical place. Uh, um, it's, it's strange. I mean, an audience can make a, a crappy venue amazing too. So, um, I don't know, sometimes, sometimes the best venues don't have the magic night that you expect and sometimes places where you're deter you know like you you're pretty much resigned to the fact that it's going to be a crappy show and and you know ends up being the best show of the tour because an audience can really make a big difference like the audience last night was terrible <laughs> yeah i was there i'll take yeah. i'll take the heat for that yeah. you're just like, like so withholding anchored the right side of the house yeah. I, uh, I, was, I was i did a lot of shushing yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, right there, sir. Everyone hear that? It's kind of a niche question, so if you didn't hear it, that's okay. <laughs> this is why we vetted some of them. Early. I think, I think it's, I think it's an E minor. Is Mike still around? Or Pat, anybody? No? They've left me, thanks. Yeah. Well, I think it's, I don't know. Do you ever, go online. Do you have the internet? Somebody teach him how to Google. Yeah, I just got, got here off a desert island on a base. Yeah. <laughs> yes, over there. To the meet question was, what was it like to meet the Ron Swanson? The Ron Swanson. Well, um, I've never actually met Ron Swanson. I was never in a scene with him uh, on the show on Parks and Rec, but I am friends with Nick Offerman, and, and he is pretty close to Ron Swanson um, in lots of ways, and in, in, a, in, in a lot of other ways, he's really far from Ron Swanson. But, uh, but um, you know, he's he's a lovely human who I'm happy to call one of my my, my best friends. Here's, here's a question from TJ in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, where in the course of making an album do you arrive at the title for that album? Do you kind of first see like, oh, these are all the songs. Here's a title that might fit that mood wise, or do you find it kind of along along the way, or search internally for lyrics that might be particularly poignant, or how do you do that? Um. A lot of time, a lot of the last few records have just there. There's been a title that has asserted itself at some point, and in, then we've tried to not call it that. Okay. Like we didn't want to really call a record Star Wars, but when we couldn't think of it, just it just became Star Wars. <laughs> Schmilko, same thing. Is like almost everything seemed like a cop out. On, I mean, it was a cop out to call it Schmilko, I guess in a way. It was like a desire with those two records to undermine the, 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 um, the, the import and weight of putting out a, a record in, 20, in the 2010s, you know? Okay. Like, it just felt a little, um, I don't know. At that moment, for us, I think it felt a little bloated and, and, and just like wanted to kind of just un undermine of some of the, the, you know, the seriousness of it. Right. Um, and then with Ode to Joy, it was kind of the opposite. It's kind of like, I don't know, maybe we should just, you know, go ahead and stand up for this being something of a, a statement of, of uh, you know, why not? <laughs> I know. And 
we did try many, many times to come up with a different title, The Ode to Joy. Like we were gonna call it The Trouble with Caring, but that felt really super heavy. <laughs> There's been a title floating around that I've tried to get um, people signed up for on like every record for like maybe the last 10 years. Uh, including my solo records, Open Kimono. <laughs> no one's biting? It's a good title. It really is. <laughs> the implication that you no longer have anything to hide is powerful. It's a, it's a haiku. Yeah. It, 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 it paints a picture. How about one or two more? There's a married hand, I think. I think I see a ring there. Go ahead. What's something new you'd like to accomplish professionally if you didn't hear? Um, well, Wilco just had our 25th anniversary of our first show. So, I'd like to accomplish a 35th anniversary, I think. You know, I think, honestly, I think the, the whole general gist and drive of, of Wilco as a band is, is to live to fight another day. <laughs> you know, I think, you know, um, we want to, be a sustainable art collective that just gets to do this thing that that is so um, fulfilling. Very cool. That's a nice answer. That seemed really actually like I wasn't being a smart ass. Yeah. <laughs> We've cracked you. Yeah. Um, we'll go to the back and then I'll come right here. Uh, uh, young gal in the back. What's your favorite swear word? Jackfruit. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> That's I mean, children just, out here. No, no, the jack. You notice that jackfruit. If you eat vegetarian or eat vegan, uh, jackfruit. Like the jackfruit lobby has gone nuts. <laughs> There's jackfruit all over the place. I never heard of it until like the last year and a half. And and I, I thought somebody was calling me a jackfruit. <laughs> no, I was just like, it's it's a good name. It's kind of a nice what, nice name to call somebody. Yeah. Oh, I guess it's all in the how, like, yeah. hey, jackfruit, <laughs> as opposed to like, hey, jackfruit. <laughs> That's what I thought. And there was, I was going to come here, Red Hat, go ahead. Um, I will tell you, just straight up, there isn't a, even the r tiniest, remotest chance <laughs> that we're going to play Deeper Down tonight, or, or possibly ever. <laughs> It's, it's an extremely difficult song to play in a live setting. I mean, in a setting like this, we might be able to pull it off. So if, if we start booking smaller and smaller rooms, maybe, maybe you'll be the only guy left and we'll have to play it. There are no hits. So. There are nearer misses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There, the hit by the greatest hit there is and, and even that would be pushing it um well i mean wilco took two years off where we didn't play and and um and since we've been back playing there's the new record which is what we most want to play and so we play as much of that as we can get can get away with every night and then since we're doing like eight songs off of a brand new record and we're playing big theaters in Birmingham, Alabama, and places all over, you know. Uh, there are a handful of songs I feel like um, we have somewhat of a responsibility to, to play, and, and I, I know that I, I can understand people being maybe disappointed if they didn't get to hear that song. If we come back around like sooner than like a year or something, I think we'll probably play uh, a, a, a deeper selection of some of the records, you know, but right now I think it's kind of like new album and and whatever passes for a hit in Wilco, in Wilco world. We're getting close to time, so maybe one or two more. Um, go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, you mean when people come by and visit and... Um, uh, no, I don't... I mean, I... I hope to get to work with a lot of people that stop by, but, but for the most part, um, <clears throat> uh, when people are coming through town and I see the calendar, a lot of, sometimes we'll reach out to uh, 
see if um, some, some band that's coming through town wants to see the loft and wants to hang out. And, and um, I don't know, I just, I just feel like uh, Wilco's a band that a lot of younger bands have heard of, and that's nice. And I would rather use whatever notoriety we have to make friends and to be, um, I, when I was younger, there were bands like R.E.M. that showed us how touring can be um, humane and, and have a, like a good, healthy environment for the most part. And I think we've tried to build on that live. But there weren't very many bands that allowed you into their world to see what it's like to be a band off the road, you know, like what kind of workshop you could build for yourself or, I don't, um, what's that? I, I mean, I shy away from the word mentor. Um, it's just, it's just friendliness, I think, you know, just trying to be, be um, you know, I, w I would have liked it if, uh, if a band invited me to come see their place that I, that I admired, you know, so. We just try and reach out and make connections. And here's one. What's your second favorite burrito? <laughs> uh, you know what? I honestly think it's kind of hard to get a terrible burrito in okay. Chicago. I really do. That's, uh, that's what, as far as I'll go. <laughs> uh, go ahead, right here in front. The question is, as a band, um, would you prefer an audience sit through the whole show or stand through the whole show, in case you couldn't hear it back? Um, we, I'm not gonna wade into it. <laughs> it's it, like burrito territory. It is, yeah, it is. Um, I think that for the band, an audience that's on their feet and excited is, is gives you a lot more energy, yeah. But I also totally get that I am a guy that would be would be hard pressed to pass up a comfortable seat, <laughs> and and I'm not always going to be the most demonstrative. I'm the worst audience. If the audience was full of me, it would just be the worst. Um, so, but but I but I've I've thought many times over the years. I've felt this like this this debate happening in real time in the audience, and I've. I've tried to get an audience to elect a leader <laughs> who would decide. Um, but I've, and I've also you know, had an internal dialogue going on a lot of shows where like, am I, I need to summon some David Lee Roth energy to get these people off their, off their butts. And then I'm like, that, but my, um, my punk rock up, upbringing won't allow that type of showbiz to come through very, very sincerely. So, I shrink from the task. <laughs> and then we're gonna leave it there. Thanks to Song Pit Live for the events. Welcome, Mr. Greedy, Chicago Athletic Association. Thanks to you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.